Hello there, YouTubers. Uh, this is Making Do 14. Although for some reason I've saved it as Making Do 15. I'm getting a little bit confused. This is Making Do 14. Um, it's now seven months since I stopped buying anything. And, uh, and it's, it is okay. I mean, I've got terrible clothes. I put some jeans on the other day that I thought, you know, they were washed. I'd laundered them, folded them, put them back in the drawer. And when I got them out, I realized the whole kind of bottom of them is worn out and frayed and raggy, which is fine when you're 20, 18. <laughs> when you're 51, it's kind of getting a bit tragic, really. So I was slightly ashamed of them, but I mean, nobody said anything. I've just been wearing the same raggy old clothes all year. I'm going to a wedding next weekend, friend's wedding, and um, I could wear my suit that I got given in January, except it's summer. And I, found, I dug out this old suit I had from years ago. I've had it for 15 years probably. And it's a sort of linen-y type of um, um, linen-y summer suit thing. And it was just disgusting. Because <laughs> I only ever wear it to sort of parties in the summer. And all parties in the summer, they have sort of dippy food. You know, like tarama salata on a bit of celery. And I get like that, that far. And then it goes... <laughs> so this suit was very mucky and when I took it into the dry cleaners a very nice lady there she had special stickers to put on where the big stains were and she got out her sticker roll and she put one on there because there was sort of curry there and there was a bit of old um, you know hummus or something down there so she put stickers on there and she went over the whole suit the whole thing it looked like a polka dot dress by the time she finished hundreds of stickers all over it, it absolutely shocking it made me realize what a mucky eater I am and I had this terrible habit and I've noticed it really badly recently I'm having a dinner with someone or a meal with someone talking like we do at Scrappy when we have lunch. We're all yabbering away. I talk with my mouth full. Isn't that bad? So I spit bits of beetroot and curry on my, on my uh, dinner guest. I'm so ashamed. That's got nothing to do with making do. It's just really wrong. And I've got to learn to go, mm, 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 mm. I totally disagree with you and I think you're wrong, you know, rather than what? Anyway, so that's that's that thing. The other thing I've been reading a book this year that was given to me very nicely by a man called Oliver James. He's a psychologist, not a psychoanalyst or a psychotherapist, he's a psychologist. He studies human psychology and he wrote a book called, uh, checks notes, he wrote a book called Affluenza, which is really about what he sees as a kind of disease of consumerism the, the kind of illness of consumerism where you don't feel whole unless you've got the latest blah 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 blah, or you don't feel happy unless you're shopping and all that sort of thing and then you do more shopping and you still don't feel happy so you try and earn more money you get trapped in that thing and it's actually very much about people who earn lots of money rather than people who don't have very much um, and it's it's fairly depressing reading and it's a fairly universal phenomenon except for Denmark where for some reason they seem to be able to bring people up it's a lot to do with child rearing and how you bring up your children. And I mean, my children are, I think they suffer from mild affluenza because we have always been fairly tight and mean with them. But they do, you know, they would complain that their iPod's really old. You know, they've got one. And there's, actually a, there's actually a video on YouTube called Affluenza, Teenage Affluenza, I think. Um, uh, which is, you know, like I think it's from a, an Australian TV show where they've got shots of a teenage girl moaning about her iPod and then it cuts to a kid in India who has to walk 18 miles to get a bucket of water to wash her blind mother's feet. You know, that kind of thing where you go, OK, we get the point. We're very, very lucky. Um, so that's quite difficult. But I mean, now it's uh, the summer holidays. We're not going on holiday this year. We're going, we, we stay for a week in Pembrokeshire. That's the only holiday we're not doing it. Italy or any of those glamorous flying away holidays um, which actually interestingly the whole family seemed quite relieved at I and mean, we've gone to this enormous um, trouble in the past to do holidays and this year we're just not bothering and every all the kids going oh brilliant we don't have to go to Italy I mean I quite like to go but you know it's such hard work last year we went on a train we traveled by train to Italy and we didn't fly um, partly because we didn't want to fly and partly because um, it was actually really nice you sleep on a train through France you wake up and you're in Italy it takes 20 hours or something. It's quite long. But there's trains with beds on. That's quite, the kids really enjoyed that. Quite like to do that again. We're not doing that. So we're having a really low-key time at that. I'm still not buying anything. I think, check out the, um, the affluenza thing on here. It's quite good. And uh, Oliver James' book, Affluenza, if you want to get really depressed about the state of the world, it's worth a read. It's fairly depressing. It's fairly universal. China, 
all the new exploding economy in China. I mean, it's only affecting the wealthy, the middle class, but, um, you know, it is that thing, and it's obvious, and it's a cliche, and I certainly understood it and knew about it in the 70s, was that people with loads of money are miserable, and people with really, really no money, you know, who live on the land and have very little, are often very happy. And, uh, you know, if you're searching for happiness, um, earn less. If you're searching for a new Audi TT, and you think that's going to make you happy, then you've got to earn more. The other thing I want to know is, how is there a way of loading longer than 10 minute videos onto YouTube? Because I've, I, I know I can't, and I've uploaded some that are like 11 minutes and 20 seconds, they, they won't accept them. But there's other ones I've watched that are sort of 25 minutes long. Do you have to have some sort of special account and pay? Mm, I expect that's the case. It's only because the things I've done, like the thing I did about the um, eco car rally and the thing I've just done about Scrappy were much longer than I had to cut them really brutally to get them to fit. I had to split one in half. And I, I don't want to do like 30 minute things, but occasionally it would be great to be able to put up something that was like 12 minutes long. But the 10 minute rule seems to be fairly firm. I haven't gone through the site yet to work out what else is happening. I finished Scrappy, I'll have more time to do more updates. I'm going to do something a bit more interesting about um, making do um, as soon as I can. Yes. Now that's it. That's it for now. Bye bye, YouTubers.